Okay, now I want to put everything we've learned together as one and actually understand what the key short run cost curves are for a firm. Okay, we've understood the law of diminishing returns, we've understood the difference between fixed and variable costs. Let's put it all together now. I've got this table up again, which is exactly the same table as I used to explain the law of diminishing returns, but I've extended it to include total costs and marginal costs. To understand these two things, let's look at total costs. Total costs are just our total fixed costs plus our total variable costs. If you don't understand what fixed and variable costs are, look at my previous video which I explained those two in. So, I'm assuming that there are total fixed costs of £10, okay, and our variable costs are very simply just £10 uh, when we hire each extra unit of labour. Okay, so that means that zero units produced, so when we have no workers in the company at all, we're not producing anything, it still costs us £10 because we've got £10 worth of fixed costs we need to pay. And then as we hire workers, each worker hired costs £10, okay, so we're adding, adding £10 to that every time we hire workers. Alright, so to take six units of labour as an example, it costs £60 to hire our six units of labour. 6 times £10 each is 60, but we've also got £10 worth of fixed costs on top, so 60 plus 10 is £70, our total cost is £70. Okay? Now, our marginal cost, okay? we're using the word marginal again in exactly the same way as we did before. So our marginal cost is very simply, how much extra, okay, how much extra does it cost us to produce another unit? Okay, so as we produce more and more units of something, how much extra is it cost, costing us to produce those extra units? That's what the marginal cost tells us here. Okay, so as we expand production from zero to four units, what do those four units cost us? Okay, the marginal cost of going from zero to four is 2.5 pounds. Okay, that's what the marginal cost tells us. Now, to, to understand how we calculate marginal cost, we're looking at changes, changes in things. So initially, the change in total cost divided by the change in total output, the changes of these two things. If we got rid of the change, we just have the average cost. Okay, we're now looking at the change, the extra cost, okay, and that's why we use changes. Alright, so again, let's go back to that same example. The change in total cost as we increase labour from 0 to 1. Okay, the change in total cost is £10. That's the difference between the two. And the change in total output from 0 to 4 is 4. So we have 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. Okay, as we hire one more worker, the change in total cost is 10 pounds. From 20 to 30, the change is 10 pounds. Okay, and the change in total product from 4 to 9 is 5. So we've got 10 divided by 5, 2 pounds of marginal cost. So the cost of making those extra 5 units is 2 pounds. As we go further, our change in total cost, as we hire our third uh, worker, is 10 pounds. From 30 to 40, cost is 10 pounds. And we have an extra units change in total product is 6, so 10 divided by 6 is 1.66, etc. Okay, so the key thing, the change in total cost over the change in total output. Okay, that's how we measure marginal cost. And when we actually plot these points, and we put these points onto a, onto a diagram, where we have output on the x-axis and cost on the y-axis, okay, we get these points, these crosses. Okay, they correspond to these points on the right-hand side. Okay, so at 4 units, our marginal cost is 2.5. 9 units on marginal cost is 2, and 15 units on marginal cost is 1.66, etc. So these points correspond to those. We then can join the points up and we can actually make a marginal cost curve. Alright, and that's what a marginal cost curve looks like very roughly. The beauty of the marginal cost curve is we can explain the shape of it by again using the law of diminishing returns. It's a great law because we can explain so much from it. So again, we've got initial marginal gains. Okay, so workers specialise okay, from round to round. So as we hire more and more workers, see, so yeah, as we hire our third worker, well, the other two workers could specialise, they're doing the same task, they get better at it. At the same time, we have underutilised land and capital. So as we hire workers, they can actually utilise those factors of production better. So we get marginal gains initially. Until, at this point, I think it's 15 units of, of output produced, we are then constrained by our fixed factors of production. Alright, we're constrained. So even though we're trying to increase production by hiring more workers, all right, productivity starts to fall 
because of the constraints of fixed factors of production. We're running out of space, we don't have enough machines for each worker. Okay, so the productivity of labour starts to fall, which means our marginal costs start to increase. Alright, and that explains the shape. And then, you can see here, as we go from 5 to 6, our marginal costs rise even, even faster. So the line gets steeper and steeper as we try and increase production because the constraints get bigger and bigger. Now, bear in mind, our marginal product curve, which I explained in the previous video, looked like that, didn't it? If you don't understand why that's shaped like that, look at my video on diminishing returns. So our marginal product looked like that, and we explained the shape of this curve in exactly the same way as I've explained the shape of the marginal cost curve. It comes back to the machine returns again. All right. Now, if you look at that curve, and now look at the marginal cost curve, you'll see that the marginal cost curve is just a mirror reflection of the marginal product curve. Okay, it's exactly the same shape, but just reflected. Okay, and can be explained through exactly the same reasons. Now, remember, our average product curve looked like this, didn't it? Okay. We also drew an average product curve that looked just like that. Now therefore, if we know the marginal cost curve is just a mirror reflection of the marginal product curve because of law of diminishing returns, well the average cost curve will just be a mirror reflection of the average product curve. Okay, so the average cost curve will just look like that. Okay, a mirror reflection of it. Let's put that onto one diagram and let's actually see what we get. Okay? And the Diagram I'm about to draw is the key diagram to take away from short run cost curves. All the stuff I've explained so far is great, it's a theory behind everything, which is also very, very important. Okay? But in truth, the two curves we take away, the key ones, are these. Okay? So again, we've got two axes. Okay? We're going to have costs on the, uh, on the y axis and we're going to have output on the x axis. So we've just said that the average cost curve is just a mirror reflection of the average product curve. Again, can be explained by diminishing returns. So we're just going to have a nice kind of smiley face looking thing. Okay, so a smile there. Let's call that the average total cost. We've also said that a marginal cost curve, we understood the shape of it. The way I like to look at it is in terms of the ninth tick. Okay, so initially it starts to fall and then rises. Okay, and that's our marginal cost curve. That's the key diagram to take away from this entire section. Marginal cost curve looks like that, and our average total cost curve, or our average cost curve, looks like that. This is all in the short run. All right. There are a few things that are important here to understand. Why have I drawn the marginal cost curve, cutting the average cost curve at this point, at the lowest point? I'll explain that in another video. And why is the average cost curve shaped like that? I've said, well, it's diminishing returns again. It's just a mirror reflection of the average product curve. But why exactly? Okay. Why? Our average fixed costs and average variable costs when we put them together, why do they look like that? Okay, I'm going to explain that in another video too. But that is the key diagram to take away. Draw it exactly like that with the marginal cost curve cutting the average cost curve at the lowest point. That's very important. That's short run costs, that's all you need for this section. Thank you.